what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Mark My Words where I am Mark and these are my words and today's subject is life as a bouncer. One thing I will say is when you work as a door supervisor you do get a lot of verbal abuse along with physical as well but you do get a lot of like people bitching at you moaning at you because you're literally just doing your job correctly. It can be funny. Unlike back in the 80s and 90s, bouncers basically used to be thugs who just loved the scrap. It didn't matter how they got you at the venue, they'd probably grab you by the scruff, smack you in the bar, and then roll you down the stairs. I said these days, we're just technically security staff, so everything's more public friendly. We have licensing now, so you need to be CRB checked before you even get the job. And it's more people oriented, and I feel that's a lot better because you can help people a lot more in that retrospect because people aren't going to be afraid to come near you but you do get the handful that do not have any people skills and there was one guy I was working with in Kamar then and I don't know what it is you could ask him what the time was and he'd grunt at you he was IDing this girl and she went uh, how old do you think I am then uh, just a uh, pry and she, he went I don't know that's why I'm asking I was like fucking hell I was like she didn't piss on your Christmas tree like fucking leave it alone like which gets into my next chapter funny refusal stories this happens a lot, especially with, with young people who forget to bring their IDs, and then they like to argue a toss that they are the age they say they are, even though they got no proof. And this is borderline hilarious. A lot of young people have got baby faces. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with looking young. I knew when I was turning 18 that I was going to get ID'd in nearly every single bar. And when my brother took me down to Swansea on the weekend of my 18th birthday, I did get ID at every single bar. And I just got used to it. I thought, no, I'd just make sure I got it on me. I don't understand why youngsters don't do that now. It's like, I can't go to work without the badge on my arm. It's got to be on display at all times. This is the way things that need to be. You can't just shun the rules because they're inconvenient. Oh, the best one is, uh, oh, do you want me to see a photo of it? I was like, why would you show me a photo of your driver's license and passport? That is not your actual driver's license and passport. And they go, why? I was like, have you heard of Photoshop? Yeah, I, I don't think they realise that you can edit photos now. You can take numbers out. I say people do this with provisionals and pens. Like, uh, instead of getting rid of the two, they add a zero on, so they're born in 2000 instead of 2002. I don't get how fucking stupid they can get. Like, And then you get, oh, I'm old enough to come in. I got a baby. I'm like, have you heard of the MTV show 16 and Pregnant? Also, you can get pregnant at age 13. You know, like, teenage pregnancy is a thing. Like, Oh, yes, uh, women do get really offended on that one. But uh, it's, it's enjoyable to see the look on their face when you actually deliver them the home truth. I actually had one uh, try to make me apologise. I was IDing a group of people before I started at nine, just to make sure there was no youngsters sneaking their way in. And she went, you know, I've got a baby, right? I went, have you heard of the MTV show 16 and Pregnant? And she just looked shocked, offended, like all of the above. And then after I was done, she went, is there something you got to say to me? I went, yes. I went, thank you for giving me your ID. And then I just walked off then. And I didn't hear a peep out of her since. And I was brilliant. And then you get the entitled ones. This is usually from the blokes. And they go, do you know who I am? I go, no. But do you know who I am? I was like, John, uh, this guy doesn't know who he is. What should we do? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, if you don't know who you are, mate, we're fucked. Like, I was like, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're being an asshole, you're too drugged to come in. You're not coming in. And saying being a bigger asshole isn't going to get you what you want. That's what people don't realise. Like I said, I refused a girl in Kamar then once. She was literally plastered. She could barely walk. And I said it nicely. I said, sorry, darling, I'm going to have to refuse you. You've had too much to drink. Like me, I'm always good with people. This is why I enjoy this job, because a lot of the time I can deal with things without having to resort to anything physical. And this girl just piped up. I went, you ruined my birthday! I was like, okay, <laughs> carry on. So the golden rule from these little examples is do not argue with the door supervisors. <laughs> Even if they are pricks, do not argue with them. Because the more you argue, the deeper the hole you dig in, and you can look at not getting into that venue, probably for the rest of the year, or even if they're regulars and remember you, they're gonna be spiteful and not let you in at all. So you gotta think of it the long run. Yeah, you might win that little battle now, you will not win the others. It's like back in Boxing Day, I was asking people to drink up, because there's no drink up time now. Some people say they go, oh, yeah, I've got at least 10, 15 minutes to drink up. And this guy said, well, I bought this dead on one, so you're going to have to give me time to drink it. And he did try to be a bit of a smug prick. And I almost got to the point where I was going to be lenient with him and I said, well, okay, I'll give you an extra five. And then he went, now move away. I said, hey, don't speak to me like that. I said, I've been tidy with you. Don't talk to me like that, now move away. And I put him in the back of my head. I thought, well, it's, it's closing time now. They're going to be leaving eventually. It's pointless making a scene. So I just went, well, he's not coming in for the rest of the time I'm there. 
So, you know, like his silly actions have caused him further consequences and it's not worth it. It really isn't. I said the most people that uh, kick up a fuss usually are 18, 19 year olds because like they, they want to test like what they can get away with and, and see if like you, you actually do stick to your word. Like I've had that before. I was in a situation where I offered because he was, wasn't causing any trouble. I let him sit with his friends while uh, they drank up and then moved on to the other place. I said, well, I said in the meantime, you can have a Pepsi if you want. He said, he said, fuck off. And this was as I was walking away, so I just turned round, and all his table just go, ooh. I thought, well, I can't back off now. And I just pointed towards the door, he got up, and then he started sluggishly going there, and so some escorting him out. I said, look, respect works both ways. You tidy with me, I'm tidy with you. I said, speak to me like again, I won't let you in again. And eventually, like, I've had a few situations like that, and I get an apology, like, the following weekend, and I don't hear a peep of them since. And then they're the ones probably helping me, like, sort out other assholes as well. So being respectful and decent does have its virtues. Like, thank you so much for listening in, guys. It's been a real treat talking about something that uh, I've recently experienced. So please be sure to like, subscribe, share, and also turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content. Thank you and good day, guys. Mm-hmm.